So while I was moving, I came across my air drying clay and I thought that that could be a fun thing to pull out now that I've got so much more space and give it a bit of a go. I've been watching so many of my favorite YouTubers making their products with clay and I love them. I watch them for hours. I have them on while I'm working or drawing or I watch them for hours and I love them and I'm obsessed and I want to do it too but I don't have polymer clay I want to get some but as of at the moment I'm working with just air drying das clay um, and a little bit of a struggle not gonna lie but it really got me in the mood and it really made me want to buy polymer clay and make some more sculpted pieces instead of just flat little pancakes but that's fine I'm really happy with how these turned out and uh, let's go through the process together Because my desk is so nice and clean and brand new, I saved some of my packing cardboard as a um, board to lay down to do all my arts and crafts on. And then I have my arts and crafts drawer in my brand new drawers. I've had this block of desk for probably about six months and you can see I've used a bit of it, but it's harder to work with than I remembered. Uh, this was a gift from my boyfriend or my little tools um, so because I haven't really used my desk a lot I struggle to know what its limitations are around what I can sculpt or make um, so initially as you can see I've drawn a circle because I thought coasters would be an easy start but then I um, started watching some YouTube videos of girls making uh, polymer clay models and it got me thinking and I thought oh I could make a little character so I'm sketching up that now. I'll link any of the artists I mentioned in my description but I've been loving watching Tammy from Uncomfy make her polymer clay key charms and desk friends and oh they're so cute they're so adorable and I just want to I want to do it too and also obviously Tiffany Wang who is amazing sculptor I find her stuff so inspiring as well so I've been watching a lot of their videos lately which is why when I came across my clay I thought I want to do it I want to try So pretty quickly with sculpting, I realized I had made up a design that was too advanced for me. I have never really sculpted much. I did a bit in um, high school and then now and then I'd pick it up and give it a go again. But I never really created a quite heavily detailed creation before. Um, and I don't know if it's the clay or because it's old and maybe wasn't sealed correctly or what, but I found that the stuff was actually really difficult to work with when trying to create, or yeah, recreate my sketch. I tried to make it more pliable by kneading it and scrunching it and folding it on top of each other and trying to squish it together. But the more I did that, the more it would stay in layers and, just start cracking where it had been folded over on itself and yeah I don't know if it's the clay or if it's me but this was such a struggle and this is as far as I got until I gave up because I'm not sure if you can see very well in this video but there were so many cracks running through it and I found it so difficult to work with and um, so before I pulled all my hair out I decided that I would park that little creation and uh, go back to my coaster idea which turned out to be a lot more doable and the clay was a lot happier to work with me with this one because as you can see I'm just like squishing the scraps into a little coaster shape 
and it seemed to stay pretty well like it didn't crack as bad as it did when I was trying to make a rounder circular head so I don't know I don't know it's probably me because I really am such a junior at this but I found this stuff not the easiest to work with but it did make me really excited to eventually buy a couple of packs of polymer clay and see how that stuff works. From videos I've seen, it, it looks really smooth and it looks more play doh than clay-y like this stuff is. So anyway, I'll let you know how I get on with that if and when I buy some. I'm still getting the hang of a lot of my clay tools, uh, but this one seemed to be the best for cutting and I just used this coffee cup lid as a guide. This one was good for smoothing lines until I just scratched a line across for no reason and that was, I had to buffer that out. That was really frustrating and I did that on almost every coaster. I thought I was being careful and then it would just slip into a groove and just zoop, cut right across my nice clean coaster. I will say though, with this stuff, I guess because it is more clay and air dry type, um, that using water to smooth out areas or glue stuff together was really good. I really found that quite satisfying, how you could get them to merge back together with a bit of water. It wasn't enough though to help me with my original creation, so that's why that one stopped. But I don't know, pretty pretty happy with how these little discs came out. This is the next day and it was time to paint them. Because they're quite thin, uh, they dried pretty quickly and during the day they were sitting just out of reach of the sun by an open window getting some breeze on and I was flipping them every probably hour just to make sure that it was drying as e evenly as possible. Um, so yeah, it didn't take too long. And then I spent the next lunch break painting them all white, getting a little base coat down. I'm just using a cheap pack of acrylic paints that I already had for all this. So it, <laughs> It worked and the end result I'm happy with, but it was, they were definitely cheap paints. Like they were really going in all sorts of ways, really weirdly. And that was it for day two of coasters. Day three, I decided to rewatch Gossip Girl for I don't know how many times now. Every couple of years, it pulls me back in. Um, I sketched out what I wanted to have on each coaster and then nerve wrackingly drew straight on to my nice white painted coasters, hoping I wasn't going to mess it up. But I was actually really proud of myself because. Doing the preliminary sketches and then having reference up as I drew, um, I found that I didn't really need to erase too much when I was actually drawing straight on. As you can see, it kind of all came together really nicely. Then I started painting. Painting the anchovies was also a nerve-wracking step because I hadn't painted in ages. And I don't think I've ever properly painted a fish, let alone an anchovy. So uh, I tried to keep it quite impressionist and more blotchy and hope that it would give the right look um, without getting too caught up in the details because I really didn't want to have to take all the paint off or like rebase these and do another go through. Uh, so I 
was actually very again very proud of myself because i actually love how these anchovies came out i think they're so cute and i just can't stop looking at them i'm actually looking at them right now as i'm doing this recording they're sitting right beside me and i love them i think they're so freaking cute look at them look at them Next was the lemons, which was pretty simple. Um, I don't want to get too complicated with how to paint the lemons or how to make them look particularly juicy or glistening. I just went for pretty basic, simple way to do a lemon. And I went with pink for the tin on the anchovies in the tin. And I thought that that worked really nicely with the blues and the yellows of the, of the lemons. So yeah, kind of just winging it as I went. I saw a little like step-by-step -step tutorial pictures on Pinterest of someone painting a lemon and that was kind of helpful for just really making it a bit clearer in my mind that each step of like where I wanted it more yellow, where I wanted more of the white and how to break the little segments down into, um, into painting steps. So yeah, I love Pinterest, so helpful. Doing this little project really made me realize how much I need to upgrade a lot of my art tools, because a lot of these are bought just the cheapest on Amazon when I first moved to London just because I really wanted to paint but I didn't want to spend a lot of money but now that I have the space and I'm getting back in the swing of it I really need to upgrade my paints and especially my paint brushes holy crap these paint brushes are so bad you know when they have like four or like three little bristles that just stick out in a weird direction or stick out slightly further than the other and then end up making a little swipe where you're not meant to be. But anyway, these brushes had all the flaws. Anything you can think of that's so annoying in a paintbrush, these ones had, so that'll be the first thing on the list. It's new paintbrushes that are actually good. I didn't really account for how long this process would take, like this is kind of three days of working on these quite solidly. Um, I have some Mod Podge sealer that I will just put on top of these because I do actually want to use them as coasters, but that's um, a step that I didn't record just because this is all being edited on the day that I finish painting and I want to give them a lot longer before I put a seal coat on top. But this is them and I'm so happy with them. I am so happy with them. Oh my gosh, they're so cute. I love them so much. I heard my flatmate outside my door, so give me a sec. Let me show you what I've made. All right, starting off. I, oh, let's get close. I love these. I'm so happy with how they turned out. So we got a little anchovy boy, a lemon, a lemon and anchovy, and a tin of anchovies. I'm so happy. Um, 
I actually stoked with how these came out. And on that note, thank you so much and I'll see you next week. Bye!